Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Glendinning. I'm the head of Moses Brown School, and on behalf of everyone here at the school, it's my pleasure to, to welcome you to the Woodman Family Community and Performance Center. For those of you who don't know Moses Brown well, we're a 233-year-old Quaker school. And as a Quaker school, I'd like to ask us to please settle in for this afternoon's conversation with a short moment of silence. Thank you. We're a school that prizes learning, of course, has a strong commitment to the arts, as well as public service. And to that extent, we are very pleased to have a partnership emerging with FirstWorks to bring top-notch artistic talent to the Providence region and really use it as a moment for learning and public engagement. So I'm very pleased to introduce you all to Kathleen Pletcher, the executive director of FirstWorks. Kathleen, thank you for your partnership, and we look forward to this afternoon's conversation. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Matt. It's so great to be here. Welcome, everyone. The FirstWorks team, our board, our curator circle are all very excited to begin this new partnership with Moses Brown, and we look forward to future endeavors in this gorgeous, amazing Woodman Center. For those of you who don't know us, First Works is in the 14th year. Um, we're a nonprofit dedicated to engaging and strengthening our community through world-class arts. Simply said, we believe art can change the world. We bring extraordinary artists to Providence, either for the first time or with new work or today with a new collaboration. And we also offer students first experiences in art. Our arts learning program reaches 30 schools across Rhode Island with direct arts experiences. Today, we welcome FirstWorks arts learning students from the JMW School in Pawtucket, Trinity Academy Performing Arts in Providence, Classical High School, and look forward to seeing many of you tonight as we kick off the FirstWorks Artistic Icon Series at the Vets and the thrilling FirstWorks we, first we celebrate this afternoon, the Chick Corea Steve Gadd Band in Rhode Island. If you have questions about tickets, you can ask our staff in the lobby. But today is an amazing invitation for all of us to become insiders, whether you are diehard jazz fans or musicians yourself or open-minded, inquisitive culture buffs. Thanks for joining us to discover more about the amazing collaboration of Chick and Steve and the season's first First Works Creative Conversation. It's my pleasure to turn things over to Boston radio host Eric Jackson from 89.7 WGBH, where he hosts our region's premier shows on jazz, Eric in the Evening and Jazz 24-7. Eric, take it away. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, and it's certainly an honor to be here with these two gentlemen, long-standing careers in the music business. I should let you know, uh, this is the first day I've met Steve Gadd, um, but uh, Steve, of course, has a long history in the music. He's played with, uh, well, one of the most exciting bands he played with years ago was the band called Stuff. And uh, he's played with uh, Chick over the years in a couple of different uh, bands with uh, Return to Forever at one time and with some of the other bands. Um, Steve has uh, had a Grammy nomination and uh, also Rolling Stone magazine voted him as one of the 100 best drummers in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also, a few years ago, he received an uh, honorary doctorate from Berkeley College of Music, too. Yeah. Chick and I were just talking because I actually met Chick back in 1971 when he had a band named Circle. Uh, he came to town. I was fortunate enough to uh, interview Chick back there in 1971. And throughout the years, I've certainly listened to and loved uh, his music. Of course, he's from right outside of Boston in Chelsea, Mass. One of the things I find amazing was that 
W was it the Malden Drum and Bugle Corps that you were in? <coughs> it was the St. Rose Drum and Bugle Corps in my church. Right. He was in a Drum and Bugle Corps. So there actually are a few records where he actually does play drums or marimba or some sort of percussion. I played bugle. Play bugle. Play bugle in the drum corps. Okay. So, so he got the drums from someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a pleasure to be able to welcome these uh, two gentlemen. I'm sure they are uh, more than able to uh, answer any questions you may have because of the uh, breadth of musical experiences that they both have shared through the years. So please give a warm welcome to Steve Gadd and Chick Corea. Welcome. You could turn this down a little bit. Mine was a little bit loud. So, uh, yeah, so, let me see, I'm trying to differentiate students from uh, <laughs> y'all. Um, well, uh, I don't know what we can accomplish in 15 minu 50 minutes, but, um, uh, well, first of all, maybe, maybe we should tell you something about us, I don't know if you all know. Uh, I've known Steve, for instance, since ni 19, we were in Rochester the other night, let me start there, Right. two, two nights ago, and Steve's from Rochester, and um, we were both, uh, we were bo both given an honorary doctorate degree from Eastman School, and uh, it was a thrill for, <laughs> but back in 64, um, or so is when we first met. We first met and played with uh, Chuck Mangione's group. All right. Um, after right after you got off the road with uh, Chucky and and Chick were on the road with Art Blakey, and uh, that's when Chick and I first met. I'm from Rochester. Um, I I got to just tell you this story because it's fresh in my mind from the other night. We I we just got a a doctor from the University of Rochester. And when I, uh, when I um, tried to get into the, that school, when I got out of high school, I couldn't get in because my grades weren't good enough. And uh, I went and um, went to New York. I was able to get in Manhattan School of Music, and then I, I went there, got my grades up, and transferred back to Eastman School of Music, uh, and, uh, which I love the school. And, um, then I uh, got like an honorary doctorate from that placement. It was like s surreal. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. It meant, it, and it meant so much to me. Um, but that's just what happened recently. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, we can, you know, um, uh, just to give you a brief, brief history of, of us. And so we, we, Chuck Mangione is also from Ro Rochester. And he introduced us, and we did a gig for a, a week or two in Rochester, and we we found each other musically. And Steve and I, since then, have recorded and played together for a lifetime, practically. In the 70s, we made a bunch of recordings, and now we have a new band that we're touring with. And uh, we're Providence, is t tonight's gig is going to be our last one in the United States. We're going to South America, and then we're going to finish the tour in Europe. So um, that's a brief very brief history mm -hmm. of, of us. I, I love this man and, and everything that he does musically and we, every time we get together it's a, it's a great, it's just a great hookup, you know, so uh, we, we partnered together by putting this great band together. But we're here to find out, I think, what you all are interested in and, and um, okay, I, Steve, I, I, I want to just say like sort of my introductory statement about what we're doing here, uh, which is um, my, whole, my whole intention in coming here to, to do this is that, is that I, <coughs> I love to see uh, music uh, and art uh, in everywhere. I, li I like to see it grow. I like to see uh, interest in music and art. And I, I of course, love to see uh, young musicians or musicians of any kind get involved in making music because 
because uh, I spent a lifetime doing it, Steve spent a lifetime doing it, and I can tell you that it's a very fulfilling job to have. It's, a, it's kind of a mission because uh, what you can do with music and art is you can uh, make people feel good. You can kind of kind of encourage them to be themselves and to create and to be creative. And it's like, it's like the, it's really the, the, the nicest part of life is to be involved in, in some art form or some kind of an aesthetic art form. So if you can get skillful at it and be able to uh, make a living doing it, it's a great, great way to spend your life. So uh, my intention of being here is to encourage whoever uh, has that intention or the idea to maybe want to do that to encourage you to please do that. So uh, as far as answering questions and what, you know, we're, we're open to do that. Should we do that? That's, yeah. Uh, does anyone have a, a question? Sure, come on down, you. <laughs> Hi, testing. Hello, what's your name? Jeremy Driesen. Hi. Uh, um, as a working drummer and, and a, a long time Steve Gadd fan, uh, it was extremely gratifying to see that on, on this tour, rather than it being Chick Corea band featuring some wonderful people like Steve Gadd, that there actually is this uh, co-headliner status the, the, in the way you're, 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 you've titled the tour. And, and I'm, I'm, it's deeply gratifying to see that. And I was curious how that came about. Well, it's, it's gratifying for me, too, and I, it's an honor for me. Um, you know, <clears throat> we just, we stay in touch, and we, we, I always, you know, jump at any opportunity that I have to play with this, with Chick. Uh, I, I love his playing, I love his writing, and it always, uh, being with you always makes me, you know, better. So, um, and uh, it was just, it it sort of just naturally happened. I yeah, the feeling is likewise. See, we have we, we enjoy working together. We 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 got together for uh, a couple of days down at my place uh, about a year and a half ago, and just to jam. Said Steve, let's because back in the '70s we we made uh, s uh, some recordings together that are still remembered and and we still remember. So I thought, and the way we made those recordings is we the basic tracks were done piano and drums. Key oh. keyboards and drums, and uh, not everyone, but many of the tracks, and then we overlaid bass and, and other instruments. So the, the connection was, was really great. So when, when he came down to the house a year and a half ago, I wrote a couple of tunes, and we jammed, and bang, it was there again without a, uh, losing a drop. So then we started talking about putting a band together. Fantastic, thank you so much. Okay, some, some young student we want. Okay, come on up, man. Testing, all right. Hi, testing, Hi. yeah, hey, what's your name? I'm Jaden Pina, I attend here, Moses Brown. Yeah. Uh, so I had a question about um, staying motivated and um, like continuing to want to make music and continuing to want to like please your fans. Do you have like any inspirations such as like new artists like Alicia Keys or Charlie Puth or anybody along those lines? Or do, like, I'm just kind of asking, how do you continue to be motivated as a musician? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, I mean, I, 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 that's just a natural thing that feel, like I feel inside, you know what I mean? I've always wanted to do whatever I'm, you know, play music or play drums, try to figure out new ways to do it. Um, you know, playing with these guys is motivation, you know, like the, the, uh, the idea that maybe we're gonna do this next year is motivation. Um, uh, and uh, I think trying to uh, stay grateful for what's going on um, trying to uh, stay in the moment so you know that you're not thinking about the past or the future you're just you know really enjoying what's going on and um, and when those when you come when you have agreements with people that you're playing with and 
the, the stuff feels really good, uh, I think that that can uh, make you live longer. You get in the zone and, and, uh, and things, uh, you don't need as much sleep. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I, you know I, I think those are the things that, uh, that motivate me. What about you? That's nice. That's nice. I, I, I agree with Steve. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I think that um, it seems to me that, that uh, one, of the, one of the hardest things to do is, is just keep your own viewpoint about life and, and music. Like, because like, once, once you, be, like, you talk about being interested, right? You're, you're, you're obviously pursuing music, right? Yeah. You're interested, right? Yeah, where does interest come from? See, see like, uh, people like to talk about you get inspired or someone tells you or you're influenced. But really, really, the, the responsible truth is, is that you, you create your own interest. You're the one that decides where to put your attention or where to go that day or what to do or what to practice or what not to, you know what I mean? So it's a self-generated thing. So you have to really rely on yourself. And that's, that's what keeps, what keeps me going is the fact that, um, that I have a simple operation, kind of just like Steve was saying, uh, which is when I get interested in something, I just go and I do it. And, and uh, there's maybe a lot of other opinions and there's a lot of challenges and there's a lot of, you know, different routes and so forth. But if I stay, if I continue to do that, like for instance, if I'm gonna play a kind of music, if I wanna try some new music, I don't know how it's going to be received by an audience. So rather than, rather than go out and play something that I think surely is going to be received well. I really want to try this new idea, you know? So I do, I try it out and I see how it works and I continue to try, uh, stay interested. Otherwise everything goes away. Because I think when, you, when, when an audience sees you play or sees you perform or hears your composition, uh, they see that interest, right? You see a band play and you see that they're really, really into it. You know, so I just say, say, be true to your own, to your own goals, and know that it's you that creates your your own motivation, man. Good luck. Thank you. The the lady. Hi. Um, Hi. What's your name? Maddie. My name's Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Um, I'm a senior. At Classical, and I'm an aspiring music student, so I'm applying and auditioning to a lot of the schools that you guys were mentioning. So I think, so what I think about is obviously right now at this time is just, okay, get in, get in. So then after you get in, I guess my question is, what is your biggest advice to someone who's trying to make it as a musician, as a young person in school, in school or just in general? Shall I start or you start? You, you go ahead, you start. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the answer is the same as we just said. Uh, you, you, have to, uh, you have to find out what you're interested in and then go for it and don't wait for uh, school or parents or other friends or anyone to say it's okay. You just do it. You know what I mean? That's step number one. And, and uh, the, the, other, the other point I think is that if, if you're if, if you're doing something, like, I, you play an instrument? Or? Yeah, I'm a singer and I play guitar and piano. Uh-huh, do you, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I do. Do you have a lot of fun doing it? Yeah. Do you, do you think you'd like to, to do it better and more and, 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 uh, and get really good at it and Yeah, that's the, that's the goal. There it is, there's your answer. You see, that's what you have to do, no matter uh, what. The, the, the school is just a place you go to to get better, you know. But the goals in, are yours, and so you just have to make them happen. That's my. And for me, um, I, um, I met some great friends when I was at school. Um, 
and, uh, and people that are, are still my friends. And a thing that was helpful full, full for me, when I graduated, I had to go in the Army because Vietnam was on. So, um, I, but I had friends that graduated at the same time that for, didn't have to go. And one friend in particular, Tony Levin, who's a bass player, and uh, who, who's a, a very successful bass player, while I was in the Army for three years, he was, had gone to New York and uh, met some people. And when I went to New York, I, I stayed with him and he introduced me to people that he had met. So that connection that I made at Eastman School of Music was, was uh, a very meaningful one for me. Not only, uh, and plus the ensembles were great, everything that was happening at the school. Um, you know, you have, I mean, not everything is great at school, but you take what you need and, and leave the rest behind. But some of the people I met were great and uh, can be, end up being friends for the rest of your life. Nick. Hi, Hi Nick. Um, I was wondering, seeing that jazz is more, you know, played live with solos and improv, how do you take that energy and channel it into a studio situation? And if do you do it more than one time and comp it, or do you just kind of do it through one thing and, and really take the energy that was used in the studio and use that for the track? Uh, I, I didn't get all of that. Like, go, go a little bit closer to the mic. How do you take more um, of a solo as if it was played live than and channel the energy of that into like a studio situation and do you comp it or play it through the whole time? And yeah. uh, well, well, in, in improvisation, it's always something new. So if you do this one moment, then you have to imp improvise another moment. So you, you don't, it's, it's, it's new again. But stu stu the difference between playing live and playing studio, is that what you're kind of asking? Right, yeah. What the, what the, how do you, the different energies and, and right. so forth. Yeah. How do you get inspired to solo? And to a, to solo. And, and I don't know. How do, how do you get inspired to solo, Steve? Well, <laughs> you know, uh, first of all, I, I don't try to think about getting the same energy that I would have playing live. That, that would be confusing. I'm just trying to deal with whatever I'm there dealing with. By, by the way, let me interject that Steve Steve has an incredible, like, m more experience than almost any other musician alive in, in recording great, great music in studios with, uh, with some of the greatest artists. Did, are you aware of that? Like, like all, all of Steve's recordings. So, so he knows about the studio, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, I think it, it's important to not try to make it something other than what it is. You know what I mean? And sometimes, um, you know, y there can be, there's different ways you can't, some guys overdub it. Some guys get, a, you know, like uh, sometimes when you do a first or second take, there's some magic happening there and you, and you keep it. And now with, uh, with the way recording equipment is, like things can be, you can go and sort of make some fixes, but, um, um, it's just, uh, yeah, the studio, you have a little bit more. I mean, the, the whole idea in the studio is to try and get it from beginning to end and, and get a live one. But, you know, you do have some other options. Um, uh, you know, so uh, it just depends on how the person that's soloing wants to do it. There's, 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 a, there's like an infinite number of ways to record in a studio, probably an infinite number of ways to play live, too. So again, it's your, you, how, you, how you approach it. Like for instance, in a studio, uh, usually there's not a live audience, although there may be people there. Although I've done, I've done sort of studio recordings where we've invited people in so that th there'd be some kind of an audience. So, because for me personally, my, the, way, the way I've grown up uh, and got accustomed to performing, the way, I, the way I like to play is I like to play like that. I mean, I. I like if I go in a studio and I don't, I don't like to sort of rehearse in the studio. If I'm, if I'm learning a piece, I like to get that all together 
and then go into the studio and just turn the machine on and, and lay it down. And, and, and it's usually, when I listen back later, for me, it's usually the first takes. Like we just did a recording with the new band in February. And I think most of the, most of the tracks that are on the new recording are either first or second takes. Uh, you know, because cause it, it's, a, it's a way of approach. Then there's another approach I've seen other musicians do where they keep recording and, and trying to, they're sort of rehearsing on tape. They record and they listen to it and say, well, I can do it a little bit better that way, you know. But it, it, whatever works for you as a producer is the way you, you want to do it, I guess. Thank you. Oh, you, you, you snuck up there, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, pr pr put the microphone near you. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Carla. Hi. And I was wondering which musicians inspired you to pursue music as a career. Yeah. Uh, Long list. First of all, could we, could we turn the spots down a little bit? There's a little blinding. Um, gee, uh, <coughs> My dad was was the first one that inspired me. He 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 really uh, helped get me into music. He used to play great trumpet solos and and uh, and he had he had 78 RPM vinyl around in the house of uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Bud Powell, uh, uh, the Billy Eckstein band, and that was the music I I grew up with. So my first touch with music was his record collection and him. And then after that, gee, it, it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm a pushover to get inspired. So I get inspired. I, I love to, uh, to, to listen to other artists, other musicians play. Let's see, um, pian piano wise, wh what's your instrument? Um, I play a few instruments. I play the drums, a little bit of the piano, and I sing in my songs. That's cool. Who, who's your favorite drummer? Ginger Baker, I think. My oh, okay. <laughs> and 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 uh, who's some of your other favorites? I don't know, because I listen to a lot of different musicians from different genres, so it's hard to pick my favorite. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, let's see. You, uh, did you say you play piano or guitar? I play, my main instrument is the drums. Drums, okay. Well, my favorite drummers uh, after Steve, who's one of my favorite drummers. Uh, and before that, before I met Steve, I was listening to Elvin Jones, uh, Philly Joe Jones, uh, Tony Williams, Max Roach, Art Blakey. Uh, is just a s Did you ever hear any of those names? Not necessarily. Yeah, oh, I figured. <laughs> I figured. Okay. You didn't get back that far. That's okay. No, no, that's really, that's really okay. It's not, it's not necessary. I mean, I mean, when I was, when I was, lear you know, when I was getting interested in music, I never went back further than, see, I was born in 1941. <laughs> and, and my interest in music was the music of that time, which was Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie were the ones that captured my attention. But then when I got uh, older and I went back into the history of, of music a little bit, I got interested in Duke Ellington and Louis Armstrong. Have you heard of those two names? Yes. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, you just go where your interest takes you, but um, I was gonna mention, those are the drummers anyway, since drummers your, are your main thing, uh, that, that group of drummers. What about you, Steve? Yeah, me, uh, um, Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich, Louis Belson, and then, you know, all of the, the same people like Elvin Jones, Tony Williams, Max Roach, um, uh, Philly Joe, Jimmy Cobb, um, and ba and pretty much, I mean, being a drummer, I, I, that's where my attention goes when I'm listening to, to stuff. So I, I zero in on, on the guys, and, uh, and I'm just pretty much playing uh, things that I heard other guys play before me, you know, and I, and I keep on uh, learning the same way. Um, but those are the guys that I started listening to. I still like to listen to them also. I still, they, you know, what they did hold still withstands the test of time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a 
Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Tony. Hi. So this is a very broad question, and you came up in music class, but um, what's your concept of melody? That's like a super broad question, I know, but um, it just kind of profoundly impacted me when that was asked in my music class. But, it's a good yeah. poetic question. The, my, my, my concept of melody is the, is the radiance of the spirit. It's like you as a being, and how you express yourself in life is the melody. You're the melody. That's how I see the melody in poetic terms. It's like the first thing that comes out that you remember and you see and you follow. <laughs> oh, that satisfied you. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> okay. Hey, Chuck, you mentioned your dad. Yeah. And uh, how, what an inspiration he is. My dad's actually here. But I didn't call you. Yeah, no. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> But then I couldn't take it from his No, stage. okay, no, I'm sorry. Uh, and my dad's not a musician, but he's a great learner. And uh, when I was in high school and getting into jazz, my buddy and I uh, would get together, and one time I was going over his house, and my dad said, what do you talk about? I was like, well, we don't talk, we play. He's like, well, how do you have a conversation that way? I'm like, well, well we do. And he said, but how? And I couldn't explain it. So he's here, you're here, I don't know he, if you, you mean your dad? You mean your you have dialogue? Your dad is here. Yeah. Oh, where is he? He's right over here. Hi, Dad. And my mom. Where? Hey, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. Welcome. So I don't know if you can explain it or demonstrate it, or but I couldn't get it across. You're trying to get us to play, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I do a thing like that. I might. He got that right away. I didn't get that. <laughs> uh, however you want to go about well, you know, you know, this whole exercise that we're doing of trying to, try, trying to put in words uh, things about art is pretty tricky in, in the first place. It, the, 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 real way, the real way it gets demonstrated is played. It's true. It's true. So um, there's no other way, better way to demonstrate it than to do it. I agree. I just want to say that I forgot to mention that my, one of my first influences was my uncle and uh, who, you know, played, um, I remember uh, playing 78 records, John Philip Sousa marches and, 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 and he, would, he played drums when he was in high school so he showed me how to hold the sticks and we'd play together and uh, he had a lot of support um, from my family growing up, my mom and dad and uh, my grandparents. So um, a lot of support there was very helpful. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, yeah, I, I agree with that. And, and me, me too, my dad. And I was, I was an only child. Uh, my dad was one of 13 children. I had seven aunts and six, uh, six uh, uncles. But, um, but my dad and, and my mother both were, were very, very encouraging. Like when I, when I went out, when I'd go out, stay out late and hang with my musician friends, uh, they, they understood and they encouraged it. And it's good to have support like that. Uh, <coughs> if you don't, <laughs> then you, it's a little bit, it takes a little bit more energy to keep your own mind in things, I think. How are we doing on time? Huh? Are we good? Oh, we got 17 <coughs> more minutes to go. We got. Since, how since the guy before me failed to get you to play, I'm going to try a different kind of trick. <laughs> a different. Uh, Steve, 39, give or take, years ago, I first saw you play. Your friend who you mentioned, Tony Levin, was on stage at the same time, and you were playing with Paul Simon. Uh, one of the quintessential Paul Simon drum parts is the start or the beginning of 50 Ways. Uh, can you play that? Sure. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm, and, and since we, I'm guessing everybody wants to see Chick play as well. Yeah. You've mentioned the influence of fathers, maybe perhaps a little bit of Armando Drumba, just to kind of even, think, even things out.
I'll play that and we just I'll play that groove and I'm gonna play something just Okay. With just a couple of bars. Joe, so you're gonna play the yeah, yeah okay. and then join in. I'm going to ask a technical question. Did you did you tune those up yourself? They they were already tuned. They sound good. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been a nice audience. Thank you. We appreciate it. Hey, yeah, uh, you know, uh, good luck with all your musical dreams. That's why, uh, that's why we came here. More people in music, more people in the arts. Do well, all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to Moses Brown. Chikoria and Steve Gadd, two of the giants of music. Dad, I hope you get it now. Thank you, everyone, for coming to Moses Brown. If you like it, come back next weekend. We've got our open house. You can hang out for that. Uh, you're welcome to mill in the, uh, in the cafe or in the space. Have a conversation. Talk about what you learned. That's what we do here. Thank you so much for coming.